Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show. We continue our conversations with filmmakers from all over the world that are here for Slam Dance as well as Sundance. And the latest short film that we're talking about has the backing of a very big name, someone in the film community that I think we all know when we say Spike Lee. Marcini is here in the building, and your short, Aria, is here at the Sundance Film Festival. And Spike Lee has been a part of this in a way, giving you some financial support. How did his involvement get into fruition? How did that all get, get started? Um, so I, I'm an NYU graduate student, and he tends to support thesis films uh, from NYU. So there's like a competition, and you apply, you submit your script, and if it gets selected, then he chooses the amount and helps support the film. Have you talked to Spike Lee directly at all? Yeah, you of guys course. Have been in communication? Yeah. yeah, I was even taught by him. So at NYU, he has a class, and so I was part of his class yeah, as a student there. What did you learn from Spike Lee? Wow, so many things. He's such an easygoing guy and so easy to talk to. Like, I was so terrified especially after I won when I went to talk to him and say he's thank a little, you so much. He's a little big time. <laughs> yeah he's a little big time so I was very nervous when I went into his office but you know he was like you should go for it and follow your dream and just go make the movie you want to make and it's a pleasure and I was like okay. <laughs> You're like, okay, Spike, yeah, I yeah. guess I'll do it. Do you call him exactly. Spike, Mr. Lee? I called him Spike, and I was like, okay, <laughs> I just did that. But, yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations. Yeah. It's Thank always you. great to have some supportive friends yeah. in the back burner to get you to follow your dreams. As for Aria, the short film that is here at Sundance, give us a background story. What, it's all, what is it all about? So Aria is the story of this young teenage girl in Athens who wants to learn how to drive a car with her father. And, uh, and she works at this kebab place part-time. And, and her father shows up, but he doesn't take her for a drive. Instead, he drops off this Chinese immigrant with his daughter because he's like, I have some work to do and I can't take you today, and he leaves. And, and so pretty much the story is about these two girls that come from totally different backgrounds and totally different experiences, and they can't even speak the same language but they end up bonding in some way and sharing an experience. I think the forced relationships <laughs> are sometimes the best relationships. Because yeah. you just don't know. In a reality, those two probably would never meet. Exactly. They would never talk in real life. But yeah. then you put them together and discover, oh, yeah. we could be best friends. Exactly, exactly. And they had something to share, which is like, I think they both had a longing for freedom in their own way. And so that's. Where did you the get film. the idea for the short? Um, let me think. It, it's, it goes both ways. First of all, in Athens, the port is bought by China and operated by Chinese people. So there was like a big wave of immigration of Chinese people arriving in Greece, um, which is the fact and what initially inspired the idea. But then I think it's very personal. Um, I lived in New York for seven years, and I had to leave a year and a half ago because I was done with school, I was done with everything, and I couldn't afford it. And New York for me was, I, I went when I was 18, so it was like my place of freedom, and I was leaving it. And I was also an immigrant there, so it was a combination of a, a personal experience and, and trying to understand this notion of freedom and putting it into two different characters in two different places in their life. The teenager who's turning 18 and the, the older girl that's you know, arriving in a new country as an immigrant. So you can kind of relate to both of exactly. the characters. Yeah. You know, you always write about what you know. Isn't exactly. That the truth? Yeah. You skew some of your own life experiences into the stories that you tell. Where can people check out your short? How many times is it playing still throughout Sundance? Um, I think there's another one screening left on the 27th. I forgot the time right now, but it's just, the shortest program just one. Just check out Sundance.org. Yeah, work. yeah. And I'll give you the list for Aria. And uh, it's still it's still not available online, but it should be in a while, I guess. After it's done with the festival run, I'll yeah. Really How has your Sundance experience been? Too, Amazing. By the way. So right. far, it's been incredible. I mean, people here are so nice. 
it's almost strange. Like they're <laughs> You're like, should we be competing? Yeah, <laughs> and everyone is like super kind. I mean, every person I've met from Utah, so like they're just genuinely you, nice people. Utah represent. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, it's been great. What yeah. I've noticed too about the festival this year, the emphasis kind of has been girl power. There's been a lot of female filmmakers, a lot of female directors, a lot of stories about female empowerment and big names in the female community that have, you know, the Me Too movement. There's been a lot of that. It's yeah. been great to see. Very, very amazing. Yeah, I'm very happy about that. I think it's the best time in the history of the world to be a woman. Yes. And it's great. Well, I'm honored to talk to you. I you have a feeling too. you're on to bigger and better things, especially <laughs> well. with Spike Lee at your back. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Make Thank sure you, you check much. out Aria, one of the international shorts at the Sundance Film Festival. We will have much more coming up here on the Mountain Morning Show. Stay with us.